In our five minute tip today, we're gonna to share with you information regarding our bonded functional aesthetic prototype and its clinical applications. As you can see in this before and after image, I think it speaks uh, volumes and on, in, on its own, the reasoning and why would I use a bonded functional aesthetic prototype. And as you can see, the results are not only immediate, but they are dramatic. And think about this, this is only an intermediate type of restoration, but it's bonded to the patient's teeth. So now the patient not only can assess right there with you, uh, your treatment plan or the idea that you have on how to improve her smile, but now she can take it home, function with you, with it, and give you even more information in a couple of weeks when she comes back to your office. Or the patient can share her smile with relatives, with her family members, and come back 15 days later and give you some feedback on where some improvements are maybe needed or if she's completely happy with this type of uh, with, with the final result and you know just ready to start treatment. Another reason why you would be able to use a prototype is for permanent restorations like cases like the ones that I'm showing that the one that I'm showing you right now where you can see excessive wear of a lot of tertiary dentin um, some uh, remaining enamel which is always good for bonding and you know a patient that has very limited uh, financial resources to go ahead with some other type of options that you may provide or that you know that may exist for patients like this. But keep in mind that this particular patient has a maxillary complete denture. So the occlusal forces against these restorations are gonna be minimal compared to natural dentition. And for this particular case, instead of us using flowable composite like in the case before, in this particular case, we use regular microhybrid composite to restore each tooth. The most important aspect of this is that all these teeth were restored in one single appointment, in one, literally one uh, increment at the, all teeth at the same time. So it brings down the clinical time from, you know, if you think about it, if you think about this, doing every single tooth uh, at a time, you're looking at about three hour appointment. Well, we got this done with one of our dental students in 30 to 45 minutes, all the teeth at the same time. And, and you will kind of understand how this is done and why, why are we able to do things like this when you look at the technique. For me to be able to share with you this really quick tip on how to develop a, 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 functional, a bonded functional aesthetic prototype, I'm gonna share with you this particular case where we had decided with the patient that the best uh, type of treatment for her would be uh, porcelain veneers. But we wanted to make sure because of the wear and the fractures uh, present in the incisal edges of eight and nine and the gingival embrasures. And uh, obviously we wanted to make sure that this was, that our new position of the incisal edge would function adequately in this patient's stomatognatic system. So what we're gonna do initially is we obviously like in every single case, we're gonna obtain some study models and we're gonna mount these on an articulator. After we mount them, we went ahead and we wax our case up and we wax it to ideal contours. We wax it to what we believe is uh, I ideal for our patients. One we have, once we have the wax up, then we are ready to either fabricate the tray, and this is a clear triad, tr uh, triad tray that we fabricate to be able to obtain an impression with a clear PVS of the wax up, or you can decide and use prefabricated trays. Just make sure that they're clear and they're, they're, they are not perforated, just like the ones that you are seeing here in this slide. Once you have that, then you're ready now to obtain or to make your impression of the actual diagnostic wax up. And that's what you're seeing here. We decided for this particular patient to use our clear triad tray technique. And with that clear triad tray, we made an impression of our wax up using a clear PVS. And you can see it right here on the photo. There is a clear triad. And up here, this clear, uh, this is clear uh, polyvinyl siloxane material. So once you have your impression, now you have to choose the restorative material. And one advice or one recommendation that I wanna give you here is that you have to choose, if you decide to use flowable composites, you have to choose heavily filled flowable composites. Today, we even have injectable composites in the market, which are micro hybrid uh, uh, composites that are heavily filled and that can be used not only for class twos or class ones on posterior teeth as permanent restorations, but they can be used as well to, uh, uh, to fabricate a bonded functional aesthetic prototype. 
For this particular case, I chose to use Herculite Ultra Flow, which has a, which has a highly filled flowable composite out there in the market. Once we choose the material, now we have to select the bonding procedure. And why do I say that you have to select a specific bonding procedure? Because the bonding procedure that you will choose is going to be directly, re directly related to the amount of time that you want to have your prototype bonded to the patient's teeth. In this particular case, because they are uh, portion of veneers what we're going to be delivering for this patient, we, we uh, spoke to the patient and we told her that we needed to have the prototype bonded to her teeth between 15 to 30 days. So because of that, as you can see on the slide, I'm only going to spot edge. I'm only going to spot edge and then I'm going to apply adhesive on the entire entire facial surface just to make sure that there is no staining of the margins of my flowable composite uh, during the time that the patient is wearing the prototype. Once you have that and you like cure that adhesive, now we're going to inject the flowable composite in the uh, in the intaglio surface of that clear PVS and with its clear tray, tray we're going to go ahead and seat it in the patient's mouth. You got to make sure that you seat it properly and correctly so that the composite bonds onto the tooth that you are actually expecting to bond on to bond on to. Once you do that, now you're going to go ahead and light cure through the clear triad for 20 seconds per tooth. Then you're going to remove the clear triad gently without moving the clear PVS and you're going to light cure through the clear PVS 20 seconds per tooth again. And then finally, a third uh, curing time, which is going to be now removing the clear PVS and directly onto the facial aspect of the flowable composite that you just added. That assures you that the composite is going to be completely polymerized. The photo that you're seeing right now is immediately after all four restorations were done exactly at the same time. You can see that there's a little bit of flash, but at the same time, you as well can appreciate that we have recontoured the teeth, that we've given these teeth natural looking line angles. We have closed all gingival embrasures and midline diastema. We have been able to restore it, the fracture incisal edges on eight and nine and all in a single clinical step. After this, you just go ahead and remove the flash. And to do this, we use a very fine diamond burr and we actually get into the embrasure area. We just remove the flash. It's very easy to remove. Then we go ahead and highly polish the facial aspect of all four composite veneers, flowable composite veneers that we have fabricated for our patient. And finally, we go ahead and adjust the occlusion. Once we adjust the occlusion, and because the patient has not been numb for this procedure, we are able to immediately after analyze her smile. She's able to have a conversation with us. She's able to give us in the initial feedback on the prototype and tell us if she likes it or if she wants us to make any minor changes to it at this point. We normally really don't make a lot of changes on the first appointment unless they are extremely long or we just kind of miss something on a wax up but we usually have the patient come back in 15 days and kind of reassess and see where we're at. See if she's been happy with it, if there's any fractures, if there's anything going, you know, anything negative about the prototype that she wants to share with us. And if there is, then we just go ahead and make minor changes, which are very easy with flowable composite. Normally, we spend a lot of time doing our wax ups. We spend a lot of time analyzing each case and patients come back and they're really ready for us to just give her a, a new a treatment date so that we can start treatment. Now, one final aspect that I wanna share with you about the prototype, one final important clinical aspect that I wanna share with you about the prototype is that at the end of the day, once I'm ready to start treatment, I use them literally as my preparation guides. I'm gonna prep through them, and this is gonna help me because if you think about this, these are all four restorations that are gonna be additive. So I have to really add to these teeth and remove very little or none, or not, no tooth structure. So in this particular case, I went ahead and I did my depth cutting uh, burrs. I used a depth cutting burr and I went through the depth of the flowable composite to approximately 0 0.3 to 0 0.5 of a millimeter. And then I removed the prototype and I look at the, uh, at, the, at the remaining tooth structure. How much of it did I really touch with the diamond burr when I was doing my depth cutting guides? And once I make all these guides come together, how much, how much contact was, was between the burr and the actual facial enamel of the teeth? Why is this important? Because these are my final preparations. And as you can see, I have 100% enamel present on all the entire preparation, which is gonna guarantee not only great bonding of my restorations, but most importantly, is gonna increase, obviously, 
um, the success rate of my veneer because it's bonded to 100% enamel. And there's a lot of studies that support this. So uh, please keep this tip in mind. Uh, I think that you are going to be able to use it uh, very regularly and in your practice, and it's going to really help you get the answers to so many questions that we normally have when we treatment plan aesthetic cases. And don't forget to follow, to, to follow us in our uh, YouTube channel, Romero Dental Seminars, and uh, find some other tips that may be, uh, uh, you know, may be interesting for you and for your staff, and we'll help you improve in some clinical aspects with your patients. Thank you very much.